As a working mom to two little girls ages three and 10 months, it can be a daily struggle to not only bond with our children at night, but to feed them, bathe them, get them to bed at a reasonable time without World War III erupting. In today's video, I'm gonna share 10 tips to make your night routine go smoother with your children. Sarah here from Work Life Glue, where we glue work and life together one piece at a time. We are on a mission to help you balance work and life and everything in between. So make sure you have that red subscribe button click so you can get more tips and tricks on Mondays and Wednesdays. And then on Fridays, we always do a daycare day where I talk about something daycare related as I am a childcare provider to up to 10 kids in my home. So today's topic is all about night routines. We have worked really hard to perfect our night routine. We only get a couple hours with our girls at night after the work days are done. And so we really try to maximize that time, make it work smoothly so we're not having fights, we're not having drama, and we are spending time together and getting everything done working smoothly and I'm gonna share the tips of how we do that. Now, granted, some nights we go for walks, we have to run errands, we have swim class, we have dance class, but this is just tips for a typical night at home or you could also try to integrate little pieces of these on a busy night as well. So my very first tip, if possible, try to meal prep in advance. I know a lot of people do this for lunches, but I would highly encourage you, if possible, to meal prep in advance for your suppers. We recently started using Using this awesome online website called five dinners in one hour and basically you spend an hour on the weekends prepping out assembling five different dinners for you to cook at night and they have a clean eating plan and just a classic menu and the recipes are awesome it's so simple laid out they give you the grocery list and everything and you can pick and choose recipes there's so many to choose from and we have been loving it now we don't typically do five dinners we typically do three for our family of four and use leftovers because here and there we also will just make up um, like a breakfast for supper kind of thing but on the nights when we need a quick dinner, everything's all ready and we don't want to eat like a ton of processed stuff. It's so easy. There's crock pot meals, there's like 30 minute, put it in the oven or one pot meals and it's just a time saver. Now there are other ways to do this as well, but this is what we've been using and loving. Tip number two is to set up activities for your children to do while you're making supper. We tend to either divide and conquer when it comes to supper, but more often than not, it's one of us home or we're both trying to do different parts of getting supper on the table. And now that our girls are getting older, especially our oldest, she will get into everything and be kind of like undoing everything we're trying to do if she's not working on a specific task. So we have a cabinet full of coloring books, puzzles, crayons, paper, as well as these really awesome highlights puzzle books and the High Five magazines. Now she's three and a half, and so the Highlights makes these awesome puzzle books that come every month. You pay a monthly fee, and they have seek and find type of puzzles, they have stickers, they have find like the funny things going on. It, there's the pictures where they're side by side and you have to spot the differences. And she loves these, they're so good for her mind and they're good to keep her contained and not getting into everything. We also occasionally will give her some fruits or veggies to cut up with kids safe knives. And this has worked just wonders for her to be working on an activity so we can really focus on getting supper on the table while still interacting with her. And it's not just putting her in front of a screen. For a baby, we just kind of set up an area with some toys for her to crawl around, or we will put her in the high chair as she's often getting fussy, and we'll just give her a few snacks while she waits for supper to be ready. Tip number three is to have dinner around the table whenever possible. I know every parent knows we've had it drilled into us that the family that sits around the table together you know, sticks together, has those memories, has that bond that lasts a lifetime, and I really do believe it to be true. Doing this really helps your children learn to converse and it helps them to eat healthy because they're seeing you eating healthy and they will eventually hopefully mirror that and it gives them something to look back on. A little sub tip to this is to try to have one conversation that you always have at the dinner table. I know when you finally get to the supper table you just like want to eat and you're exhausted so you may just like 
you know, not really talk very much, but it, we, every night when we sit down to the dinner table together, we always ask, what was your favorite thing you did today? And it's just a wonderful way to talk to each other, to make sure we're connecting, and it also is teaching our kids gratitude and to look at the positives. So, so what was your favorite thing you did today? Um, chalk. Playing chalk? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do the sand tables. Another really cool thing I found to go off of this is these conversation cards. They have all different kinds, but there's one specifically for families. So you could have like one child each night pick a card and everybody goes around and answers that question. I just think it's such a wonderful way to think of new things to talk about at the table because it may be your only time in the day where you're all sitting down together. Tip number four, if you have a picky eater, my best tip as somebody who's not an expert in this area but works with kids a lot, is just to try out different things. Every kid is different, every situation is different. So we have learned that trial and error works really well. Um, for our daughter, we have tried these muffin tin meals where you just put a little bit in each little muffin tin. She loves having the different colors. And then we just encourage her to at least try every single thing in the muffin tins. And we also have tried this train plate which may seem excessive, but it has worked really well for her. You can put like an M&M or two at the last train, and if she tries everything, or you could have them eat everything, depending on what level your kid's at with eating, and then they can eat the two M&Ms or whatever it may be in the end. Or maybe you put their favorite food at the end and they can't eat that till they eat everything else. Um, it's just a really good way to encourage your kids to try things because that's where we really struggle with our daughter. And it makes mealtime fun, which is always a plus. Tip number five when it comes to your night routine is just to try to incorporate little fun things along the way. So for example, we recently bought this little bell at a flea market because my mom, when my daughter stays at my mom's house, gets to ring a bell before supper. And I actually remember growing up on the farm ringing this big bell to let my dad know when he was out in the barn to come in for supper. And so it's just a really fun thing to pass on to our kids. So Celia rings the bell before supper. <laughs> And it's just super cute, something she loves to do, and it helps encourage her to get to the table when other nights she might have fought it before. And then another fun thing we often do is to put on music when we are cleaning up the kitchen and our girls dance and we sometimes dance and we sing and it just makes it more fun. Piggybacking off of that, if there's something your child really resists doing, try to do something fun to lure them to that. Like the bell we talked about, when it comes to bath time, we use colors, these little color drops that you can add to the water to make different colors and it just makes the water different colors and you can mix colors. Our daughter loves this, she's obsessed with how you can make different colors from other colors. And so often if she's resisting going up for bath, instead of having a huge meltdown, we just race her to get to the bath, because whoever gets to the bath first gets to pick out the colors, and that gets her moving like that. It's just a fun way, trying to, instead of making it negative, and like, you have to get up to the bath right now, try to do something fun that will lure them there. And then it's fun for everybody, it's non-confrontational, and then you have a positive night instead of a negative one, because we all know with little kids how quickly that can change. Tip number six is just to try to fit in some kind of quality family time if you are able. Even if you have just 10 minutes at the end of all of your night routine, getting the baths in and everything, try to do something as a family. We occasionally will pull out a kid's game. The great thing about the little kid ones is that they are very quick. So we'll play one of those occasionally. We love to watch cupcake decorating and cake decorating videos. So there's lots of them that are just 10 minutes long with lots of different cakes that are getting decorated. So we'll sit down and watch one of those before we head off to bed or often we will go for just a little walk around our neighborhood and then come back. It's also just a great way to connect and it just gives you something at the end of the day to just fill your heart up with joy instead of just doing the same things over and over. Tip number seven is to try to make bedtime about bonding. Some parents will both put each kid to bed together, some parents will split it up. We tend to split it up and really tell our kids that it is all about that quality time, especially since our oldest really resists time with her dad because she's a mama's girl. 
we tell her that this is Papa's only time with her. This is their special time during the day and he will be so sad if he doesn't get to read her her books. And so when we're having that 10 to 15, 20 minutes before bed reading books and singing songs, we really try to bond, say funny things, ask about their day. I often will ask our oldest daughter Celia what two things she's thankful for. We'll pray together. I'll ask her if she has anything she wants to pray for. And it's just such a wonderful time to get that one-on-one -on -one time with your kids, especially if you're both working parents and you don't really have that time any other time of the day. Tip number eight when it comes to bedtime, really try different things and see what works for your kids. We have tried so many different things with our daughter Celia, and maybe you have a child who just goes to bed and it's great, but we do not. Um, so I just encourage you, if something's not working, try something else. Um, we have tried so many things. I have a whole video on bedtime and nighttime routines. Routines work really well. What we have been doing lately, I wanna talk about in case it could help you guys, is magnesium supplements because they help calm your child. We also do give her these calming pills from Highlands. They're all natural, but they also just help to calm the child. We use lavender essential oils before bed on her body and on her pillow. Bubble baths at bath time because Regular baths were making Celia kind of crazy and energized instead of calm. So now that we've integrated bubbles every time, it really helps calm her because it's not as much like splashy play. It's more just like playing with bubbles, which are soft and fluffy. And I've noticed her becoming a lot calmer through that. We use a sticker chart for staying in bed that in the morning she can put a sticker on. And on top of all that, because we have a very strong-willed three-year-old, we put gates up in her door. I resisted doing that for the longest time. I don't know why. I kept, just kept trying the same thing over and over and over again, and it wasn't working. And finally, we put the gates up because I honestly thought she would fight it. And it worked wonders. I think she just needed a physical boundary of you can't come out. Um, and... I, it's like overnight miracle. I don't know, but just that combination of everything really works. I just encourage you guys, try different things. Don't feel like a failure. If something's not working that some expert says is supposed to work, try something else because chances are something else will work for your child. Tip number nine is to do a couple things at night to make your mornings go smoother. There's so many things we could do at night to make our mornings go smoother, but as working parents or even stay-at-home moms who are just exhausted by the end of the day, it's not realistic to like do everything at night. But a couple things we do every night to make our mornings go smoother. Number one is delay brew our coffee. We get all the coffee grounds in there ready to go and then we delay it for the morning. That way when I my alarm goes off at 4 a.m. Yes, I wake up at 4 a.m. Make sure you look in the description below and I'll leave a, a link to a video of why and my morning routine. But just having that coffee already ready lures me out of bed before I want to get out of bed and it's just so easy. I don't have to worry about making coffee in the morning and I can just get up and enjoy it right off the bat. And then another thing we usually do at night is start a load of laundry and we also delay that. So I will take clothes on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays or towels on Tuesdays and Thursdays and I'll put them in the washer, load up the soap and then delay it seven hours so that when I wake up in the morning it's already done and then I could just throw it into the dryer. It makes it go really smoothly and I'm way more likely to do that at night than right away in the morning when I'm exhausted. And then lastly, of course, try to take some time for yourself, even if it's just 20 minutes to read a book or paint your nails or put a face mask on, whatever it may be, try to incorporate some time for yourself. If that means putting your kids to bed a little earlier, I highly encourage you to do that. We do that. Um, and our daughters aren't expected to fall asleep right away, but they're expected to stay in their rooms because I've explained to our daughter Celia that if mama's not happy, nobody's happy. And so if I don't get any mama time, I'm a grumpy mama. And so we often will watch shows together at night or watch YouTube videos or just hang out and connect. Um, I also like to do organizing projects here and there if I'm feeling up to it, but just do something that fills up your cup so that the next day you have a cup to pour from. So those are all of my tips for having a smooth night routine. I would love to know if there's something you do at night to make your night go smoother. If you are new to our channel, make sure you subscribe to get more tips and tricks and routines for busy parents. Our channel is all about work and life balance. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.
Bye, guys.